Okay, Bezat Hashem. Today we are starting the very bottom of Bet Amud Aleph at the Gemara, and we're going to learn today Bet Amud Bet, to be in Masechet Shabbat. So let's just remember briefly what we had in the Mishnah yesterday in order to appreciate what we're going to do today. So yesterday we learned a Mishnah that tells us that there are Itziyot Shabbat when it comes to transference of Rishut, of domains on Shabbat, Literally means taking outs or going outs, exiting. It's shtayim shehen arba bifnim and shtayim shehen arba bachutz. So what does it mean? The way we understood simple pshat is that, let me move this over so I can see you better, is that there are two melachot da of carrying for the person inside, bifnim, and then there's another two which are asur midrabanan for him, as well. And then there's two melachot for the fellow outside, the ani, that are doraita, with another two that are asur drabanan. That's the way we explained it yesterday. Now we're going to quote a Mishnah in Mesechet Shvuot that says a very similar idea, but it only lists Shtaim Shein Arba. It doesn't say this chiluk of bifnim and bachutz. So the Gemara is going to wonder why is it that our Mishnah writes bifnim and bachutz, this look this distinction, and in the Sechet Shvuot it writes just Shtayim Shehen Arba, like that, point blank. Now, in order to understand this Mishnah, this Mishnah is the beginning of the Sechet Shvuot, and it says actually four different categories that fall under the list of Shtayim Shehen Arba. Sometimes we find Mishnayot do this, where it will group together a lot of items that are connected by the fact that they have a similar introduction. Shtayim Shehen Arba, for example. The four different areas of halacha that are unrelated, but they're all shtayim shehen arbas. So that's why it groups it together. In Megillah, we have this actually, where the Einbeins, you know, those Gemaras that contrast this and that. There are a bunch of different contrasts in Mishnayot that one follows the other that are not related, other than the fact that it's contrasting two items that are similar. So in the beginning of Shavuot, there's a Mishnah that brings four categories of things that are shtayim shehen arba. Let's go through them, and we'll explain with Rashi as we go through. It says the Mishnah, Tanan Hatam, it's the very bottom of Bet Amud Aleph. The Mishnah in Mesechet Shvuot teaches us as follows. Tanan Hatam, Shvuot, when it comes to Shvuot, this is called Shvuat Bitoi, which is a vow of an utterance, saying something. Shtayin Shehein Arba. So, you could be Chayav on two, which are actually four. What does it mean that there's two types of Shvuot that are actually four? So the way Rashi explains it as follows. Shtayim shehen arba means is that in the Torah it says if a person makes a shvua lehara or leheitev. What does that mean? For negative, lehara, negative, or leheitev is for good, for positive. So he says like this. The two that are taken from that pasuk is if somebody makes a shvua on the future. So for example, I will eat something or I will not eat something. Now that's on the future. That's la ra leite because the verse la ra leite implies in the future. Now, if you know if you don't do it, you don't carry through. So then you're chayav. What's called a korban olav yored. What's korban olav yored? So this is a unique type of korban chatat. Olav means goes up, and yored means goes down. What does it mean? Usually, if a person does an avera, there's a specific type of animal korban that is prescribed for the sin that he did. Specific korban chatat. When it comes to transgressing your shvuot, your vows. There is an option based on your financial level. So a poor man will bring a korban for desecrating Yeshua from flour. Someone who's a little wealthier will bring birds, and someone who's wealthier than that will bring animals. So it's called olav yored. It's olav yored. It's actually, it uh, fluctuates. It descends or ascends depending on his wealth level. That is the ones that are included in laral leitev. That's shtayim. Shehein arba. And there's two more that are added in from the Psukim actually in Rashot, is when you don't make a shvua on the future, but you make a shvua on the past. So you said, a shvua that I didn't eat yesterday, or shvua that I did eat yesterday, and it turns out it wasn't true what he swore. So then also you'll be chayav, that is shtayim shehen arba regarding shvuot. Again, two shtayim is in the future, it's a simple pshat in the tev, and then it included in it also, this is not Durabanan, by the way. This is Midoraita. Included in it as well are the two in the past, which is brought in addition based on Drashot in the Psukin. Okay, so this is category number one. Shtayim Shein Arba of Shvot. 
Clear? Yeah. Good. Let's move on. Turning to Bet Mud Bet. Now, Yidiot Hatum'a Shtayim Shehein Arba. Knowledge of Tum'a is Shtayim Shehein Arba. Two, which are four. So Rashi explains what is this talking about. So we know that the halacha is if a person is Tameh, he's not allowed to go into the Beit HaMikdash, and he's not allowed to eat Kodshim, he's not allowed to eat Korbanot, because those are Kodesh, they're holy things. So the halacha is, and this is the Shtayim. Shtayim is if a person knew he was Tameh, but then he had Halama, which means he forgot. He uh, had a lapse in awareness. He forgot, okay? And then with his lapse in awareness, he went into the Beit HaMikdash. And he ate. Or, or, or it's one or the other. Or he ate Kodshim. So, both are Asur. You're not allowed to go into Beit HaMikdash when you're Tameh. You're not allowed to eat Kodshim when you're Tameh. Either way, that's the Shtayim. The halacha, by the way, is you bring Korban Olav Yore there as well. That's the halacha there as well. So that's Shtayim. Shtayim is, he knew originally he was Tameh. He forgot. He went into Beit HaMikdash or ate Korbanot. So now the halacha is, when he remembers after, oh, I remembered I was Tameh when I did that action I wasn't allowed to do. That's Shtayim. Two examples where he'll be Chayav Korban Olav Yoreid after the fact. Okay. Now what's Shehen Arba? So Shehen Arba is, he knew that he was Tameh, and he remembered that he was Tameh, but he didn't realize this is Makoma Mikdash. Or he didn't, re- this is the place of the Beit HaMikdash. Or he didn't realize this was Kodshim. He made a, he forgot about that. So the Shehen Arba includes two more categories, which is he knew he was Tameh, he didn't forget about that, but he thought this is not the place of the Beit HaMikdash, or this is not a Korban. And he ate it, again, that would be Shehen Arba, those are also included based on Psukim, you'll be Chayav just as the same. So we have Shtayim, which is, he didn't, he forgot he was Tameh, Shehen Arba, he knew he was Tameh, but he forgot that this was the place of the Mikdash, or that this was Kodshim. Okay, I'm just explaining. These are really not no gear for our, our sugya today, but that's the Mishnah, the second category. Continues the Mishnah and Shvot, and this talks about Sarat. Marot Negaim, the colors, or seeing Negaim, Sarat is Shnayim Shehen Arba. Two, which is four. Now, what is that referring to? So the Torah teaches us, a person goes to the Kohen if he has a white spot on himself, and the Kohen looks at it and says, is this Sarat or not? Now we have what's called the av of the color, which is called either se'et or baheret. Se'et and baheret are two uh, colors of white, variations of white, I should say. And Rashi explains, what are those variations? Se'et is if it's white like the snow, and baheret, uh, excuse me, baheret, excuse me, baheret is white like the snow, and se'et is white like wool, like tzemer, like wool. But secondary to those colors is what the Pasuk calls Sapachat. Sapachat means each one has a secondary color as well. So not only will the Se'et and Baharit be Tameh, but also a secondary color, which Rashi here tells us is, the secondary color to Baharit is white like the plaster of the Heichal, of the sanctuary. And the secondary color to Se'et is white like Krum Beitza, like the white of an egg. Either way, there's two primary colors that will make you Tameh of Tzarat, and there's two secondary colors. Okay, so everybody's getting the idea of this Mishnah. We have two, and then the Torah includes an additional two, which are considered secondary, but just as significant as the original two, that you're Tameh in this case, or in the other cases, you'll be Chayav, Korban, or Levi, or Red. Clear? But now, what does the Mishnah finish off the fourth category? And then it says, Marot Negayim Shnaim Shehen Arba, Yetziot HaShabbat, Carrying on Shabbat, Shtayim Shehen Arba. Two, which is four. That's the end of the Mishnah for what we're quoting today. So the Gemara is going to ask, I don't understand. Our Mishnah in Mesechet Shabbat says, Shtayim Shehen Arba Bifnim, Vishtayim Shehen Arba Bachutz. And there, in Mesechet Shvuot, it says, just Shtayim Shehen Arba. Why isn't it right there also, this? Bachutz, Bifnim. Instead, it just writes straight, without Bachutz and Bifnim. What's the difference? That's the question. It couldn't be just one side? What do you mean? The well, Ani himself is doing Akira, Anacha, Otsa'a, Mereshut Rabim, Le'achit. It could be, but why would it only write then in the simple format there and here make it more complicated? Why did the Tana of the Mishnah, Rabbi Yudah Nasi, why did he decide in Mesechet Shvuot to write Shtayim Shein Arba, period, and here he wrote, Shtayim Shein Arba Bifnim, Shtayim Shein Arba Bachutz. What's the difference? 
Why would he write it when he organized the Mishnah? It was done with tremendous sechel, tremendous intellect. So why did he organize it in such a way? So let's see. Let's see the question now. The Gemara says, "My Shnahacha. What is the difference over here in Masechet Shabbat? Tani Shtaim Shehein Arba Bifnim. This Shtaim Shehein Arba Bachutz that it teaches two which are four inside, two which are four outside." And what's the difference over there in Mesechet Shvuot, Etani, that it taught, Shtayim Shehein Arba, just two which are four, Vitulo, and nothing else. Nothing else. It only teaches Shtayim Shehein Arba. What's the difference between Mesechet Shabbat and Mesechet Shvuot? Beautiful. So the Gemara answers, very logical answer. Where is the place that we're really discussing Hilchot Shabbat? In Shvuot or in Shabbat? Shabbat. In Shabbat. So says the Gemara, Hacha here in Masechet Shabbat, the Ikar Shabbat, who, that this is the primary place, the main place that we're discussing the halachot of Shabbat. So Tani Avot v'Tani Toldot. It taught the Avot, and it taught the Toldot. Now I mentioned well, this. Basically, I me- one second. One second. I mentioned no, this. I mentioned this yesterday. But what are the Avot and what are the Toldot? Just to. Akira Anacha. So, not exactly. Avot, at this point, we would assume is, Avot is Hotza'ah. Hotza'ah is Yachid L'Rabim. Because that's what the Psukim discuss. And Hachnasa would be Toldot. Entry, which is from Rabim to Yachid, would be Toldot. So here in Mesechet Shabbat, we'll have to analyze this, but in Mesechet Shabbat, which is the primary place we discuss the Alachot of Shabbat, so Tani Avot Tani Toldot, it teaches the primary, the Av, and it also teaches the Toldot, so it says two which are four inside and outside. Hatam, but over there in Masechet Shvuot, the Lav Ikar Shabbatu, that's not the primary place we discuss Shabbat, that's a Mishnah that happens to be discussing different categories that fall under, or different topics that fall under the category of two which are four. So it included Shabbat there, but that's not its main place of discussion. So therefore it taught it in short form. All it taught was, Avot Tani, Toldot Lo Tani. It only taught the Avot, Toldot Lo Tani. It didn't teach the Toldot. Now this brings us to the obvious question, which is, we have to now decide, well, what are Avot and what are Toldot? So really, how are we going to interpret our Mishnah? And how are we going to interpret that Mishnah? Well, because what the Gemara just said is, our Mishnah teaches both of both Avot and Toldot, and that Mishnah and Shvot only discusses Avot. Well, it says Shtayim Shehein Arba. So what are the Shtayim Shehein Arba that are Avot over there? Right, that's what we have to understand now. Everybody here, meaning, we just created a chiluk in order to answer Mesechet Shabbat and Mesechet Shvuot. Mesechet Shabbat is only is discussing, is the primary place, so it discusses Avot and Toldot. Mesechet Shvuot is not, it's, it's brought Agav, it's brought along the way, so it only discusses the Avot. So the Gemara asks, Avot Mainiu, what are the Avot? Meaning, when we say we're discussing here, both Avot and Toldot, and in Shvuot, just Avot, well, what are the Avot that we're talking about? So if you'll say Yitziot, it refers to like I just said, Yitziot, meaning Avot refers to taking from a private, Rishut HaYachid, to Rishut HaRabim. Okay. That's the Avot. The problem is, how many examples, the Oraita, are there of Hotza'ah in our Mishnah? Two. There's two. But two altogether. Right. Yachid Rabim, Rabim Yachid. But two altogether. And we said in our Mishnah, Shtayim Shein Arba Bifnim, Shtayim Shein Arba Bachutz, which sounds like there's two examples for the Ani and two examples for the Balabais. So if you're telling me that Avot, so if you're telling me that Avot means Hotza'ah as opposed to Hachnasa, so that doesn't make sense in our Mishnah. V'yetziot treavyen. Yetziot, there's only two of them. So how can we say it's Shtayim Shein Arba? It's not Shtayim Shein Arba B'fnim and Bachutz. That doesn't make sense. And really, this is also a question in Mesechet Shvot, because in Mesechet Shvot, we said we're only discussing the Avot. Well, in the Avot, there's only two. There's only two. And there it says, Shtayim Shein Arba. But what's Arba? We're only discussing Avot in Mesechet Shvot. But Akira and Anachai, it's not the... It's not, a, it's not the Avot. Those are the two options, the two parts that are necessary to create the Av. Only Otsa. So, the, so what we're saying now is in order to answer the difference between Shabbat and Shvuot is that in Shabbat we're discussing Avot and Toldot. In Shvuot we're only discussing Avot. The problem is in Mesechet Shabbat, in Shvuot, excuse me, really that's where the question is, we said two which are four and we're saying we're only discussing Avot but there's only two that are considered Ikar Avot which is Hotza'ah. Now there's two ways you could do Hotza'ah by the way. 
One is if the ani reaches his hand in, takes something and then takes it outside, that's hotza. So or if the balabai takes something from inside and puts it outside, that okay. would also be hotza. But then you only have two examples of avot, you don't have four. So what does it mean in shvuot when it says, shtayim shein arba, if you're only discussing avot? There's only two. Okay. Huh? So maybe you'll say that what it means really in mesechet shvuot is like this. Maybe it means to say is mehen lechiyuv u mehen liftor. Really, what it means is one second here. So things that are not chav de oraita also chav de rabbanan. Sorry, just one second. Yeah. Maybe you'll say, right, maybe you'll say is, maybe you'll answer, really what it means is, and Masechet Shvot is like this, Shtayim, there are two, which are avot that you're chayav midoraita, shehen arba, and there's two more, that are also akira from inside, and acha outside, but you're patur on those, those are only asur midorabanan. So what we'll answer is like this. When it says Shtayim Shehen Arba in Mesechet Shvot, it means there are two which are Avot that come from inside to outside, which is Hotza'ah. There's another two that are also Hotza'ah brought from inside to outside. But those, you're only Asur on a rabbinic level, not on a Daraita level. Maybe that's what it means. So there are four examples of Hotza'ah, of inside to outside. Two are Yechayah Midoraita. Two are only Asur Midrabanan. But there's Av Melachah de Rabanan? No, no. So, so that's... So what we're trying to say now is, maybe the entire Mishnah Shvot is discussing Hotza'ah. Two of them are Midoraita, and two of them are Midrabanan. Okay. But if it's giving me two, uh, two examples for each one, yeah. the Ani and the Ashir, uh-huh. it's not two that they are actually four? Well, again, there's two ways you could be Chayah for Hotza'ah Midoraita. Remember, I just illustrated. Hotza'ah <laughs> Midoraita. Either the Ani puts his hand into the Rishut HaYachid, picks it up, and then puts it outside. Or, Abayit lifts something up in the Rishut HaYachid, puts it outside and puts it down. Okay. Those are the two ways you can be Chayat Prohotzana to right the level. So you say, okay, but if it's talking about the Avot, you only have two cases of Hotza'a. So why is it that in Mesechet Shvuot it says, Shehein Arba? Also, maybe what it means is, there's another two ways of Hotza'a that are not Asur Midor right, but that are Asur Midor Abanan. Which, which is, again, where the Hotza'a started off inside and then went outside, but they shared. One did Akira, one did Hanacha. Like we explained. Maybe that's the Pshat. The problem is, in the context of that Mishnah, it doesn't really make sense. Let's see this inside. Vaha, but the Gemara says, Dumya de Marot Negaim Katani. If it's written in that Mishnah, Mesechet Shfuot, it should be similar. What was the category right before? The colors of Negaim. The colors of Tzarat. Now, in regards Similarity. to the colors of Tzarat, those are all Asurmi Daoraita. All of those colors that we said, the two primary, Seit and Baharat, the secondary colors, the, they're the all Asurmi Daoraita. So says the Gemara, logically then, if you're putting Yitziot Shabbat, Shtayim Shehen Arba after, it would also make sense logically that they should all be Asurmi Daoraita. Simply based on categorization. If you're putting them all together, by the way, the other two examples there are also Asurmi Daoraita which is the examples we brought before. The four categories that are brought there should be Asur Midoraita. So asks the Gemara, if you want to tell me, the difference between Shabbat and Shvuot is, here we're talking about the Avot and Toldot, there is just the Avot. What's the Av? Hotza'a. The problem with that is, there's only two that are Midoraita, and if it's taught next to Marot Negaim, they should all be Midoraita. So you want to say that the last two are Midorabanan, it doesn't really make sense contextually based on its being put next to Marot Negaim. That's the Kasha. So let's read that inside. So there's a comparison? Exactly, like a hekish, you could say. Comparison, simply, the fact that Rabbi Yudah Anasi put Marot Negaim next to Yitziot Shabbat, they should all be Asur Midoraita. So also the Toladot are the Oraita? So that's, one second, I have to see, hold on. Ma Atam Kul Ulechi just as regarding the colors of Tzarat, they're all Chaya Midoraita, that's what we're talking about there. Af Acha, so to here, Af Achanami, also here regarding Yitziot Shabbat, there in Shvuot, Kul Ulechi they should all be the Isturim that are Chayav Midoraita, not just Midorabanan. So we're back to the question. The question we have is, why is it that in Mesechet Shfuot it writes Shtayim Shehein Arba, and it doesn't make this Chiluk of Bifnim Bachutz, whereas in Hilchot Shabbat, here, Mesechet Shabbat, it says Shtayim Shehein Arba Bifnim, Shtayim Shehein Arba Bachutz, to say here we're discussing 
av and told and their only avot is, is difficult because then you'll be forced to say the other two, the shehen arba there, are not even a sur deoraita, which doesn't work with its proximity being put next to marot negayim. So therefore, back to the question. Ela Amar of Papa, so rather of Papa gives the following answer. He says like this. So it's a similar idea, he says like this. Hacha over here, the Ikar Shabbatu. Again, Mesechet Shabbat is the primary place we discuss Hilchot Shabbat. It's the primary place. This is where we discuss Hilchot Shabbat, Mesechet Shabbat. Beautiful. So Tani Chiyuvi Upturi. So therefore, what we're discussing in Mesechet Shabbat are examples that you are doing something that's Asur and your Chayav, which means it's Asur Daoraita. And there's also examples that it's Asur Midra Banan, so you're Patur. So that's why we have Shtaim Shein Arba Bifnim, Shtaim Shein Arba Bachutz. Meaning to say is, there's examples that you are Asur V'chayav, Midoraita, and Asur V'patur means it's only Asur Midrabanan, which we said already is when one does the Akira, the other one does the Hanacha. But that's in Mesechet Shabbat we elaborate because this is the main place to discuss Israel Shabbat. Hatam, but in Mesechet Shvuot, the Lav Ikar Shabbatu, that's not the place we discuss Ilchot Shabbat. Happens to be it's brought along the way, but that's not the primary place. So Chiyuvitani, we only teach the, teach the categories of Hotza'a that you'll be Chayav for, Midoraita, Upturi Lotani. And we don't teach the examples that you are Patsur, meaning those that are Asur Midrabanan, but you're not going to be Chayav for. So the Gemara says, okay, but let's stop for a second. We're only teaching cases you're Chayav there. So what's Shtayim Shehen Arba? What are the cases in Hotza'a that you're Chayiv Mida Oraita? We're saying you're only discussing cases of Chiyu Mida Oraita there. What are the cases Chiyu Mida Oraita? Hotza'a and Anacha. Not Hanacha, what's it called? Hotza'a and? Hotza'a? No Akira. Hachnasa. 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 Right? So what we're going to be forced to say is when it says Shtayim Shehen Arba, what does it mean over there? It means you have Hotza'a. Two. Okay, so you are taking from the Rabim to the Achit, so it's Achnasa, it's by itself, once exactly, you take it from... Exactly, and if you have Ani and Balabayit, so you have two examples of each. Vice versa. So the problem is, it says Yitziot HaShabbat. How does that include Achnasa? Yitziyah and Achnas and, yit, and uh, Knisa are two different things. So it's another Av Melacha So let's see, so let's see. Asks the Gemara, Chiyuv in my new. Well, what are the examples of Chiyuv in Mesechet Shvuot? Yitziot. Again, back to the question. That refers to Hotza, which is from Rishut Hayachid out to Rishut Harabim, right? But the problem is, again, Yitziot Tarti Havyan. There's only two Yitziot, which is, again, like we said, either the Ani lifts his, puts his hand inside, the takes the item Hotza. outside, or the Balabai picks something up inside and puts it outside. The other ones are Achnasot. That's not Yitziah. The Gemara answers, and I think we alluded to this yesterday. Shtayim de Hotza'a, Vishtayim de Achnasa. There are four cases in Midoraita, because as I just said, there's two examples of Yitzia that are Chayav Midoraita, and then there's two examples of Achnasa that you're Chayav Midoraita, which let's just remember what they are. It's where the wealthy, the, the Balabayit reaches his hand outside, picks something up, brings it inside, or the Ani picks something outside and puts it inside. So you have two of Yitzia, two of Achnasa. But now the problem is, why does it say Shtaim Shein Arba Yitziot? It's not. It's not Yitziot. That's Yitzia and Hachnasa, right? That's Hotza and Hachnasa. So why does it use the word Hotza? Yes, you with me? Yeah. Good. The problem is Vayitziot Katani. But in the Mishnah there, it taught Yitziot. Yitziot means Hotza going from inside to outside. Shuta Yachid to Shuta Rabim. So why does it use the word Hotza if it means to refer also to the Yisurei Doraita of Hachnasa? Um, Ravashi, this is the first answer. Ravashi says, Tana hachnasa, Tana, the author of the Mishnah and Shvuot, hachnasa nami hotza'a karila. Hachnasa also is called hotza'a. Mm -hmm. Hachnasa also is included under hotza'a. Meaning to say is, re-entry, bringing from the Rishut Arabim back to Rishut Yachid, could also be called uh, hotza'a. So, shtayim shehein arba yitziot really means the two that come from the direction of Rishut Yachid to Rishut Arabim. Shehein arba, there's another two which are hachnasa, that's also included in yitzia. Well, where do we know that from? So the Gemara says, Memai. Well, how do you know this? Where do you find an example where the Tana uses the illustration of Yitzia, which is going out from the Yachid to Rabim, to refer to Achnasa? How do we know that that's true? 
Made the Tanan, it's based on a Mishnah later. Later on Ayin Gimel Amud Aleph, it's the seventh parak of the Masechta. The Mishnah teaches us the 39 Melachot. It lists all the 39 Melachot. And what does it say over there? It says, Hamotzi Mershut Lereshut. What does Hamotzi mean? If you bring out, not Hamotzi Lechem in Aretz. Hamotzi Mershut Lereshut. What does it mean? If you transfer from one Reshut to another. Now that means both from Reshut Hayachid to Reshut Arabim, and also from Reshut Arabim to Reshut Hayachid. So the Gemara says, it only says motzi, but it includes over there, hachnasan, it says chayav, you're going to be chayav. So we see clearly the derech of the Tana is to say motzi, or yitziah, even though he's also referring to hachnasa. And therefore, regarding the Mishnah Shvot, it says yitziot shabbat shtayim shein arba, it means two which are hotza'ah, two in addition which are hachnasa. So using, so at this point, the way Ravashi is explaining is, the word hotza'ah includes hachnasa as well. Otsa'a really just means transfer. It means removal. You're removing it from one place, bringing it to another place. It doesn't mean exit, as opposed to entry. It means removal. Milo Askinan, and the Gemara just finishes the proof, isn't it discussing there in the seventh parak, the Kama'ayl Mershut Hayachid, Mershut Hayachid. There it's talking about where you move it from Mershut Hayachid, Mershut Harabim, Mershut Hayachid. It also includes over there when it says Hotza'a from Mershut Harabim to Mershut Hayachid. So it includes both from private domain to public domain and public domain to private domain. Vikakari la Hotza'a and it calls it Hotza'a. So therefore we see the way of the Mishnayot is to use the word Hotza'a even when it refers to Achnasa. The Tama Mai. So he says, well, what's the reason? Why does it use the word Hotza'a if it means to refer to Achnasa? What's the Pshat? So the Gemara answers, kol akirat, kol akirat chefetz, because any removal of an item, transfer of an item, imkomo, from its place, tana hotza'a karila, the tana calls hotza'a. So the first explanation we're saying so far is, the Mishnan Mesechet Shvot says, shtayim shehein arba, which is the yitziot over there, is two, which is four. The word yitzia just means a transfer, a removal of an item from one place to a different place. Included in that is the exit from Meshut HaYachid to Meshut HaRabim. That's Shtayim. Shehein Arba, another two, which is from Meshut HaRabim to Meshut HaYachid. Why? Because Yitziah can also refer to a re-entry. Because the point is, Hotza'ah doesn't mean exit necessarily. Hotza'ah means taking it from one place of its origin and putting it elsewhere. How do we explain our Mishnah now? Shtayim Shehein Arba means two cases where you're Chayami Deoraita, and another two cases which are Asur Mi Durabanan, again, which follow as we explained in the Mishnah. We're not discussing those Rabbinic Yisurim there in Mesechet Shvuot because that's not the main place to discuss Hilchot Shabbat. This is the first way we explain the contradiction between Shabbat and Shvuot. Good? Now let's move on to the second answer. Omar Ravina. Ravina says a second answer. Sorry, before that. Ravina brings a proof, another proof. You could also imply this from our Mishnah. Because in our Mishnah we said, And then, sorry, Omar Ravina, you could also imply this from our Mishnah. Because our Mishnah says, And the first example we explained in our Mishnah was a case of Achnasa. If you remember in the Mishnah, the first thing we discussed was the Ani standing outside. And we said, if he put something inside, the first example we discussed in our Mishnah after introducing Yitziot Shabbat was the case of Achnasa. So clearly, Achnasa falls under the category of Yitziah. Why? Because it just means moving an item from one place to the other. That's the first explanation. Now we move on to the second explanation. Well, Tshmamina, that's a good proof. Now, Rav Amar Rav says another answer. Now, Rav, let me explain it outside and we'll see it inside. Rav's answer is going to be as follows. Rav says, really, the word Yitziah does not mean exit or entry. It doesn't refer to either of them. The word Yitzi'ah, it's a very interesting answer, refers to Rishuyot. Shtayim Shehen Arba means, Yitzi'ot HaShabbat Shtayim Shehen Arba means, there's two Rishuyot regarding Shabbat. We have Rishut HaYachid and Rishut HaRabim. Now, in regards to the two Rishuyot, there's four ways you could be Chayav Midoraita, which is discussed in Mesechet Shvuot, which is both Hotza'ah and Achnasa. But the word Yitzi'ah does not mean exit. Yitziah means Rishuyot. That's what Rava says. It's interesting because the word really doesn't mean that. But that's what he says. Yitziah means Shtayim Shehen Arba. Shtei Rishuyot for Shabbat. Shtei Yitziot for Shabbat means Shtei Rishuyot. Two domains. Private domain and public domain. Included in that says the Gemara Mishnah Mesechet Shabbat is for Isurim. There's two ways you can be Chayav for Hotza'a. And there's two ways you could be Chayav for Achnasa. And in our Mishnah, what it says is, Yitziot HaShabbat Shtayim Shein Arba. Again, there's two domains, there's two Rishuyot in Hilchot Shabbat. And then there's 
Four ways you could be chayav altogether, which is tumi right to tumi rabbanan for the balabayit, tumi right to tumi rabbanan for the ani. That's what the, he understands the word yitzia doesn't mean exit altogether. Yitzia means reshuyot. That's how Rav explains. Let's see it inside. Rav Amar reshuyot katani. The Mishnah means to teach reshuyot. When it says two, it doesn't mean exits. It means to reshuyot. That's really what it means. Reshuyot Shabbat Shtayim. The domains of Shabbat is two. We take a look at the Rashi close to the bottom. Rav Amar. Let's read that inside together. Rav Amar. It's um, about 10 lines from the bottom of Rashi. Rav Amar. The Kashi Lecha. You see that? Chevro? Rav Amar? You see it, Matan? Yeah. The, the ten lines from the bottom. Rashi. Rashi. Take a look at Rashi at the bottom. If you want to take a look. Rav Amar de Kashi Lecha Lishna Di Yitzia Bein Acha Bein Atam. The difficulty you had between the Mishnah here and the Mishnah there in Shvuot. Rishuyot Katani. Really, all it means is Rishuyot. What does it mean? Rishuyot Shdayim. There's two domains. Rishuyot Ayachid. Rishuyot Arabim. The pub, private domain and the public domain. Shehen Arba Bifnim, which are four inside. Klomar, meaning to say, Val Yedei, and through these two Rishuyot, Yesh Lecha Arba Yisurin Bifnim. There's four Isurim inside. Now again, remember, Isurim means two midoraita, two midorabanan, ukinegdan bachutz, and there's also four more outside. Umehen lechiyuv, mehen leptor. Some of them is chayav midoraita, some is a sumi and your patur. Vaid shvuot, and that mishnan shvuot, kul lechiyuva kedu kimna. It's talking about the chiyuv midoraita, which is the two hotzot and two achnasot that we called it midoraita. So bottom line, we have two ways to explain the Mishnah. Either when it says Shtayim Shehein Arba, we're saying Shtayim refers to the Malachot Midoraita, and then Shehein Arba it means, and there's two more that are so Midrabanan. Or the way we're explaining Shtayim Shehein Arba means there's two Rishuyot, Shehein Arba, with four different Isurim that could emerge from those two Rishuyot for the Balabayit and for the, the Ani. And remove a place, remove the place. So that's the first pshat. The first pshat we say Yitziah could refer to Achnasa as well. Yitziot um, Shabbat Shtayim Shein Arba means there's two Isurei Shabbat Midoraita, and there's another two that are Midorabanan. I that includes Achnasa and Achnami. Achnasa is also called Yitziah, no problem. The second pshat we're saying is Shtayim Shein Arba Yitziot doesn't mean Achnasa or Yitziah. It means Rishuyot. There's two Rishuyot in Shabbat, Yachir and Rabim, <coughs> and there's four ways that there's an Isur. Two of those Isurim are Daoraita, two of those Isurim are Midrabana. And Mesechet Shuot is only talking about the Isurei Daoraita, Hotza and Achnasa. The Mishnah here refers to both because this is Mesechet Shuot. Good? Stop here, the bottom of Bet and Bet. Zat Hashem will pick up tomorrow. Give me the Madalaf, Kevin.